Listen, the word that God gave me today, I didn't know it was the one that I was supposed to preach until I was in the back room and one of the production members said something to me that I had no idea about until this very moment. I was going to preach Psalms 23, and I was going to get to the part where the Bible says he prepares a table in the presence of my enemies, and I was going to name the sermon, he's going to bless me in your face. And I was ready to preach it too. I had imagined myself hooping and hollering and screaming. And the Lord said, that's not, that's not what I want to say. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse number 1, and to contribute to the brevity of time, I'll read a few verses and explain the rest. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, wear the prophet that is in Samaria? For he would recover from his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of clothes. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of leprosy. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk from this subject, the ripple effect. The ripple effect. Sometime around 347 BC, there was a well-known philosopher by the name of Isocrates, not to be confused with Socrates. This is a different philosopher, Isocrates, and Isocrates wrote a letter uh, to a young man named Demonicus, who was the son of one of Isocrates' friends who had just passed away. And as a result of the relationship between Isocrates and Demonicus' father, Isocrates took it upon himself to ensure that Demonicus had a fighting chance at life in the absence of his father. He was, for all points of argument, his surrogate father. And in a letter, he wrote to Demonicus these very significant words of advice. He said to him in the letter, no adornment so becomes you as modesty, justice, and self-control. In other words, he was saying, Demonicus, if you were a Christmas tree, you would only need three ornaments. Um, one, make sure you stay humble. Number two, always be fair. And number three, do your best to maintain the ability to regulate the responses to what happens to you in life. These words <clears throat> have survived the torture of time, cascaded across the oceans of the abyss and made it into Shakespeare's own pen. 
as Shakespeare begins to write uh, his play Hamlet, he puts these words in the mouth of his main character, Polonius, as he was talking to his son, Laertes, and he says these words, no adornment, uh, uh, so befits you as these three things to culminate with the idea of this statement that we all know, he says, above all this, to thine own self be true. These words echo, echo, echo down the corridors of time. And here we are, 2,022 years post the death of Jesus, still using these words in our daily lexicon as a way of crossing from darkness into the marvelous light. This story is, is, is it's extremely important because uh, from Isocrates to Demonicus, from Demonicus to Shakespeare, from Shakespeare to Polonius, from Polonius to Laertes, ripples. Words from one generation passed to the next. You, you know, by definition, a ripple is when you toss something in the middle of a vast nothingness. And as a result of the entry of that thing, it causes the nothing to flow. It's like throwing a stone in the middle of a lake. It could be a small stone, but the ripples will be felt for feet. Perhaps if the stone is large enough for miles, just everybody say ripples. Continuous spreading results actions and events, just small movements. Everybody say ripples. <laughs> what we're witnessing here in the text are ripples. This is, this is absolutely a ripple effect and the life of Naaman does not start in the text that we read. This, this storm has been coming for some time. What, what we've settled on as the text is not as powerful until you understand its context. There is something that has been coming. It's been coming. It, it, it's been coming. And sometimes, especially as young people, you can miss the mark because we're focused on the destination, not recognizing that the power is in the journey. The ripples, they were coming. And, and so we get to this and after, let, let me explain where the ripples come from. We get here after a successful ministry, Elijah, the prophet, is on his way to be with God. He's, a be, he's about to be caught up in a whirlwind and he's walking with his protege, Elijah. The Bible says as they are walking and he's on his way to go back and be with the Father, uh, he gives Elijah some words, ripples, just like Isocrates did Demonicus. He gave him some advice and, and he says, he says, listen, um, Elijah, I want you to stay here at Gilgal. And, and Elijah says to Elijah, he says, um, uh, Elijah, as long as the Lord lives, I will not leave you. He says the same thing. Then he gets to Jericho. And Elijah says, listen, I need you to stay here. Elijah says, as long as the Lord liveth, I will not leave you. Then they get to the Jordan. And he tells him to stay at the Jordan. Elijah said, didn't you hear what I had said? I told you, dog, I ain't going nowhere. If you go, I'm going. If you go, I'm going. Somebody shout ripples, ripples. He repeats himself at Jericho. He repeats himself at the Jordan. And before he departs, he says, is there anything that I can do for you? He looks him square off in the face and said, that I might receive a double portion of your spirit. Do I have anybody here with me today? Why am I telling you this? Because we are witnessing ripples. Something has happened in the corridor of time. 
that has caused a force to spread out through historicity. And now we are facing Naaman looking at him, assuming that this story is in isolation, but it is the response of a ripple. Something that has taken place before Naaman's mother ever met his father, something that took place before the king had ever hired him to be the commander of the army. He, he was always floating this way. And I want you to know that there is nothing happening in your life that happened by accident. The trouble that you have endured was a stone thrown into your life because it was a direction that you would not normally or organically go. So sometimes God has to throw a stone in the middle of your decision so that you will go where he wants you to go. It was the ripples that sent Naaman in this direction. We don't know why they moved to this area. We don't know how he met the king, but we do know somehow his life forced him little by little and wave by wave to end up into the place where he would receive this job. And all of the jurisdictional power of the military might was under Naaman's auspices. So much so that he gathered 32 armies together to annihilate Israel. And let me tell you, you know you're powerful when your enemies recruit to destroy you. you. You keep telling me I ain't nothing. If I'm not nothing, fight me by yourself. But the fact that you had to call my ex, my next, and everybody else to fight me shows me that you thought I was something I did. Do you know your enemies will tell you who you are? The problem with most of us is we think that our lives is an amalgamation of our friends. But let me tell you something, your friends will never help you get to destiny. You don't get to destiny by friends, you get to destiny by enemies. Peter had never gotten Jesus any closer to the cross, it was Judas. And if you notice, when God is talking to both of them, he gives both of them a title that is surprising because Peter, who takes a knife out and cuts a man's ear off for him and fights for him, he says, Satan, get behind me. Meanwhile, Judas betrays him and he says, friend, whatever you came to do, do it quickly. Give your neighbor a fist bump and say, you've been thanking the wrong people. You've been thanking people you like. You've been thanking people who had your back. You've been thanking people who've been liking your pictures on Instagram. You've been liking people who let you borrow money. You need to be thanking the person who tried to get you fired. You need to be thanking the person who doesn't like you because you must understand that they are ripples. That's why many of you have been in the same place because you haven't had enough ripples in the water. You evade all kinds of trouble. You never want to go through the valley of the shadow of death. But let me tell you, there is something in the ripple that gets you closer to the reward. Somebody say, Lord, send the ripples. Naaman, to those of you watching online, Naaman was like many of you, he was powerful. Naaman was prosperous. Naaman had a platform. Naaman was prestigious. But his whole life was upset by a three-letter conjunction. But. Naaman was powerful but he was a leper. Naaman was the captain of the guard, but he was a leper. Naaman obviously was wealthy, but he was a leper. He had stars on his uniform, but sores on his skin. Oh God, help me in this place today. On the surface, it looked like he had the victory. But on his skin, it looked like he was in the valley. Are you praying with me today? So what he does is he keeps his uniform on so nobody could see his skin. Oh, the danger of letting your uniform 
be your skin. Oh, the danger of letting your money be your skin. Oh, the danger of allowing your title to be your skin. Help me in this place today. What, what we have today is a society of hiders. Nobody wants you to see the skin. Nobody wants you to see the flesh. Nobody wants to see the real you. And so we pretend to be what we are not to get people to accept who we are. But the problem is when I show you who I am not and you accept what I am not, then you become frustrated when you find out who I really am. My advice to you is to show who you are often and early. I'm going to talk to some single women in here. Tell them on the first date, I don't cook, I don't clean, but I do know how to pray. If you're looking for a maid, you ain't got the right chick. If you want somebody to pray, you looking at your girl. Do I have anybody in here to say, you got to know who I am now? Yeah. We're all hiding. Look, look at your name and say, I know you're hiding something. I, I see you in your Chanel, but I know you're hiding something. I, I see you with your lace front, but I know you're hiding something. Brother, I see you with that spank t-shirt on, but I know if you take it out, something, I, I see you. We're all hiding. And I'm not here to judge you because you are not the first one to do it. This whole human drama started off with a hider. Come here, Adam. Where art thou? hiding behind a fig leaf. You're not alone in this. When, when Moses was born, his mother thought it would not be robbery to hide him in the reeds in the Nile River. David, when he was running from his enemies, he hid in the cave of Adullam. When, when Elijah, uh, well, he, would, he would hide in the cave. David hid in the cave. Listen, Gideon was hiding in a wine press, threshing wheat. It was all, we're all hiding, but God sent me here to tell you, and I want you to help me to uh, prophesy to somebody, tell them God told me to tell you, it's time to drop the disguise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's time to drop the disguise. God can't bless who you pretend to be. Stop watering down yourself because people can't handle you at a hundred proof. Be who you are. Be it now. Somebody shout, I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of hiding. Matter of fact, some of y'all are afraid to praise right now because you looking, you sit next to somebody who's been looking at you funny all service. You know that if you get too loud, look, they're going to say something to you. Look at your neighbor that's sitting down. Say, I'm not sitting down. If you want to see the preacher, stand up. I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of coming to church. It's too early. I, it's, we're, we're all, we're all hiding. We're, we're all hiding. We're all hiding. We're all hiding. That, that's why when Naaman came into the scene, the Bible lets us know that as a leper, he had to do something whenever he came around people. He said, unclean, unclean. He had to announce what he had before he entered into the room. Isn't it about time that we just start letting people know who we are early? So that people are not consumed by what they find out later on. Everybody just shout, I'm crazy, I'm crazy. Confused, confused. You might as well go ahead and say what you are because when you hide what you are, you cannot be accepted for who you can be. This is the time for you to drop your disguise. I need about 500 people watching me online right now to shout so loud in your apartment that you disturb your neighbor and say, I'm dropping the disguise. I'm getting rid of this closet Christianity. I'm going to be who I am supposed to be and I'm going to do the best I can at it because this is the season for me to be myself. Somebody shout, drop the disguise. I wish I could have went in the Garden of Eden and told Adam, you don't have to hide, you're already forgiven. <laughs> Moses, you don't have to hide your stutter. It's not necessary for your next assignment. <laughs> Problem is you're hiding the very thing God intends to use. 
you trying to hide your pain and that's where your ministry is. Oh God, I wish I had somebody in this church today. Just high five your neighbor and tell them, drop the disguise. Stop dumbing yourself down. Stop going into buildings. There's one thing to be humble, but there's another thing to be timid. I am calling you out of your timidity. I want you to walk into the boldness that God has created you to be. You find it, it ain't your fault. You smart, so stop acting dumb. You pretty, so stop acting ugly. Somebody shout, this is me. Somebody in the balcony shout, this is me. Somebody at home shout, this is me. Elijah, don't hide. God's going to take care of Jezebel. Stop hiding. Just go on and do you. Come on, somebody, just, just, just be you. And, and just, just, just announce it. This is who I am. You, you would have got the job if you didn't lie on the application. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you thought that you needed to present yourself as something you were not. And it was pretending to be who you were not that lost you the opportunity because God cannot bless who you pretend to be. unclean insecure insecure rejected rejected divorced divorced three kids two baby daddies oh you don't want to say nothing you might as well get it out early Instead of tiptoeing around. And this is, let me tell, let me tell the season saying something. You got to stop being so hard on these young people. Just because you got 20 years past your tight skirt don't mean you didn't used to wear one. Holler at your boy. Oh, no, I, I fight every one of y'all. Don't look at me like that. Just, just because you done got 20 years past it, it, it ain't that you don't want to do it. It's you ain't got the energy to do it. Because after you take your medicine, you got a nap that you got to take. But you remember when you used to go to Vegas and you had a skirt so tight that they could see your blood circulating. Now you're out here judging these young folks. Leave them alone! <laughs> Fist bump somebody say, just say what it is! But he was a leper. Moses had a sister named Miriam. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 12 that she was shut out of the camp. Somebody here, somebody online knows what it's like to be prosperous but don't fit. to be employed, but still searching. To be educated and still can't find the groove. Shut out. But do you know what God told me to tell you? Oh, y'all don't want to hear it. Miriam was shut out of the camp. The camp that she used to be in. But when she caught what she caught, she got put out of the place she used to be welcomed. God told me to tell you that he's about to open a door that used to be open to you. Oh, you missed what I just said. God said to tell the people he's getting ready to open the door that your butt closed. Oh, you missed what I just said. Used to have, I, I almost got to church, but I got divorced. I, I almost got the job, but I was a felon. God says, I'm about to beat your butt. I'm about to beat the butt out of your life. There's not another butt that's going to keep you out of the door. I am what I am, but I'm still about to be what God called me to be. Slap somebody and say, your butt days are over. You're about to be the head, not 
just ahead, but the tail above only and never beneath the lender and not. Somebody shout, God beat my butt beat my butt out of my life, not just out of my life, but beat it out of my mind because I'm a butt thinker. I can't get there because of what I think about myself, but let me tell you when God gets ready to bless you, he who has established, began a good work and you shall establish it unto the day of Jesus Christ. But he was, we just talking, but he was he, he was a, a leper. Now, now let, let's get into the sermon because now we see the ripples. The divine design of God. Haman invades Israel. When Naaman invades Israel, the Syrians take a group of Israelites for slaves. Somebody shout ripples. They take a group back, <clears throat> and in that group, there was a young woman. The young woman finds favor with Naaman's wife. Naaman's wife invites her into the house to be a maid. You see? And now she invites her into the house to be a maid and one day she's walking around the house and the door to the bedroom is open and she kept a glimpse of her master who she has never seen without his uniform. So she kept, she captures a glimpse of Mr. Naaman in the room and she finds out that under the success is leprous skin. Can I just talk here for a moment? The reason why God doesn't allow some of us access to kings is because we're so enamored by the success, but we can't handle the skin. There are a lot of people who want to get close to Bishop Jakes. They want his stage, but can you handle his skin? Because there is a man under the armor. I didn't know. I thought he was flawless. I thought he was perfect. I had no idea that his face was disfigured. I had no idea that mucus was coming out of his skin membranes. I did not know that he had no phalanges because lepers have been known to have their limbs chewed off by rats because they become numb. Come on, Tia. Go, go. And so he, she looks at him yes, sir. and I'm excited because she says to the wife, uh, I don't mean to bother you. But. And I'm not even judging what I saw. But I know about a prophet. And ma'am, if we can get him to the prophet, I know that he could be healed. Look at the captive knowing something the captain does not. Look at your neighbor and say, you might be the captain and I might be the captive, but I got something you don't have. <laughs> Oh, don't you be jealous of nobody. Don't let nobody look down on you because of your situation. Listen, this is where you found me, but this ain't where I'm about to finish. The captive knew something that the captain did not. Says if you can get him to the prophet, I know, I know, I know he could be healed. Somebody shout, I'm about to get my healing. Oh, don't you miss what I just said. 
That's a word for somebody. And I don't know where you're sick. I don't know where you're lumpy. I don't know where you're broken. I don't know where you're frustrated. I don't know where you're angry. I don't know where you're stressed out. But there's a healing coming in your direction. Somebody just begin to shout that there's a healing coming in your direction. You didn't earn it. You didn't deserve it. You can't buy it. But it's still coming. It's still coming. Somebody shout, it's still coming. And, and let me tell you why it's still coming. Because when you were in your situation, your mama was praying. Ripples. Your grandmama was praying for you. Your bishop was praying for you. Somebody shout, I am a beneficiary of the ripple effect. <laughs> Never be the person who gets an opportunity to be close to greatness and be distracted by the skin. There is always skin underneath the success. That's why you can't let your money be your skin. That's why you can't let your title be your skin. That's why you can't let your corner office where the window be your skin. For the Bible says we're all dirt created by God. He breathed into Adam the breath of life and man became a living soul. Everybody shout, I'm dirt. That's why it doesn't pay to be arrogant because all you are is dirt. And I hate to hurt your feelings, but if you got a nice house, you just dirt in a big crib. If you got a Cadillac, you just dirt riding good. So now the ripples have brought the maid in the house that has the solution to the man of the house. Who knew the prophet? Who knew the God? Who had the solution for the man with the situation? I don't know who can't feel that in this room. I don't know if you can feel it online, but can you feel that tide beginning to bring your blessing closer? Can you feel that ripple? Somebody unemployed, there's a job coming in your direction. Somebody with breast cancer, it's about to dry up. Somebody with a wayward child, your child's about to come home. Why? Because of the ripples. Somebody shout the ripples, the ripples, the ripples, the ripples, the ripples. God's about to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. If we could just get him, if we could get him to the prophet. My Lord, I know, I know he could be healed. Naaman tells the king what the girl says. Now this text, outside of context, you will miss the power. Because what is really taking place is a conversation in the house. Because now the girl tells the captain, the captain tells the king, ripples. Now we got a problem because of another ripple that started a long time ago. Remember, Syria has invaded Israel. And now Syria needs the prophet from Israel to heal the situation that he has. Are you listening to me? So what is really taking place is the reason why the king is abhorrent and, and upset. He's like, how are we going to go ask these people who we just robbed? to do something for us. Can you do me a favor and look at your neighbor and say, how they gonna do that? Look at your other neighbor and say, where they do that at? Got the nerve to come ask me for something after how you did me. Back then you didn't want me, but now I'm hot. 
Mike Jones, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong church. Listen. The king is mad like, that, you know, you know how we do when, when somebody do something to us and something bad happened to them, say, that's what you do. That. That's what you get for messing with a child of God. God don't like ugly. He don't mess with his own. Come ask us for something. Go ask your mama. But in order to do it, he, he writes a letter and sends, listen to this, 750 pounds of silver and 150 pounds of gold, which is equivalent in today's money as $225,000 worth of silver and $1.3 million worth of gold. And by the way, 10 Dolce & Gabbana tuxedos. He's got to send all of that because he treated somebody bad he did not know he was going to need. Do me a favor and tell your neighbor, it's going to cost you too much to mess with me. It's too expensive not to like me. It's too expensive to hate on me. It's going to cost you millions lying on me. You better shut your mouth. Keep your mouth off of me, my family, my property, my husband, my wife, because it's going to cost you your future messing with me. Don't lose your future because you bring it up my past. Look at how much disloyalty cost. Whenever trust is high, the cost is low. And whenever the cost is low, it's because the trust is high. It is always more expensive to repair a relationship than it is to maintain one. And the problem with our generation is we don't value relationships. We value views, we value TikToks, we value likes, but we don't value people. We walk over whoever we need to walk on to get to the top. We walk over whoever we need to walk over to get to the top. But baby, what you didn't recognize is I was a bridge. You was going to have to come back across. <laughs> Slap somebody say, don't burn me. You're going to have to come back this way. Don't lie on me. You're going to have to come back this way. Don't mess with me. You're going to have to walk this mile again. Now he's got to mortgage his future because he didn't maintain his past. <laughs> got to pay for favor that had he just done right, he probably would have gotten it for free. <laughs> Anybody want to say, you ain't have to do me like that. You ain't have to do me like that. I, I wasn't going to hurt you. You didn't have to do me like that. I wasn't going to tell nobody what you did. You didn't have to do me like that. What have I told you? God's going to make your enemy pay you for what they did to you. I wish I had about 500 people online. I'm going to give y'all a moment to think about what I just said. God is about to make your enemy financial future. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to give God some crazy praise in this place and shout until the roof falls out of this place. Shout until your apartment complex calls the manager and sends them up to your house to find out what is wrong with you. Let the redeemed of the Lord. can't hear you potter's house i said open up your mouth and begin to thank god that there's a check coming for the hell you've been through somebody say things about to get better things about to get eyes have not seen ears have not heard you haven't even conceived the good things that god is about to do for you
Do me a favor, tell your neighbor, pay up, pay up, pay up, pay up, pay up, pay up, pay up. You've been looking at me funny all service. Pay up. Look down your row. Do me a favor, look down your row and tell everybody on your row, this is a praising row. This is a praising section. As for me and my section, we shall praise the Lord. If you don't want to praise, go sit in the balcony. But if you go sit next to me, give God some praise. I feel something about to happen in this room. Let the redeemed of the Lord not wave so, not clap so, but The king gets the letter. The Bible says he was so mad. Boy, that boy had a temper, didn't he? Because you got to be mad to rip your own stuff. I've been mad enough to tear other people's stuff up. I ain't never been mad enough to tear my own stuff. Rips his coat. Who am I? Mike, he's, who am I, God? Am I the one? Who determines who lives and who dies? He's reading the letter. And now I see ripples. Because when he reads the letter, Elijah says, man, settle down. <laughs> Doing all that for chill out. says, send him to me so he'll know that a prophet <laughs> lives in Israel. When Na Naaman gets to his house, Elijah tells him, go dip in the Jordan. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go dip in the Jordan seven times. Now, I know I had just told you that the last two places that Elijah and Elijah had been seen together was Jericho and the Jordan. Go dip in the Jordan seven times. All right, okay. I'm gonna talk to y'all over here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a drink and let you swallow. Now, I know I just said this, and if I didn't, pardon me. I meant to say that when Elijah and Elijah was walking, they were at a place called Gilgal. And Elijah tells Elijah, stay here. Elijah says, as long as the Lord liveth. I, I had said that, right? <laughs> then they go to the Jordan and to Jericho, these two places that he repeats himself. And now, when Naaman gets to his house, he sends him back. To the last place he was with his prophet and he combines the Jordan and Jericho because he tells him to dip in it seven times now if I know my Bible at the walls of Jericho times and on the seventh day on the seventh time they shouted and the walls fell down 
Now, how do I know this was the message for you? When I got in the back room, my production manager came up to me and said, PK, did you know that the first time you preached at the Potter's House was April 22nd, 2015? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yesterday marked the seventh year since I stood here for the first time. God told me to tell you, if you shout today, it's gonna fall down. If you shout today, it's gonna crumble. If you shout today, it's gonna break loose. If you shout today, it's gonna be a miracle. Open up your mouth. Something's about to happen in this room. Something's about to happen in this room. Give your neighbor a high five and shout neighbor. God told me to tell you, this is the day of your release. Open up your mouth and over the next 30 seconds, act like you done lost your mind and shout until it shakes. Shout until the walls fall down. Shout until your children get off of drugs. Shout, yeah, yeah. Good God Almighty, do me a favor out there in the audience. I want everybody to turn around. Somebody shout one for the Father. Turn around one more time. Two for the Son. Turn around one more time. And shout three for the Holy Ghost. Now say, neighbor, do you want to know why I keep turning around? Because every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Shout it, yeah! Shout it, yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa. Hey, yeah. I've got to be theologically sound here. Remember what Naaman had to say every time he came in public. Unclean, unclean. Now, our language called English is not too far from the Hebrew language, which is why we call our letters alphabet, alpha, omega. And in Hebrew, they don't just use letters, they use word pictures. Unclean in the Hebrew is the word tamai, T-A-M-A-I. And the word picture in the mai is the M, which is mem, M-E-M in the Hebrew. What, what does a M look like? <laughs> oh, y'all know. The word picture for an M in Hebrew is wave. No wonder he had to go to the water. Because God does his best work in the water. When he got ready to give us Jesus, he sent him through the water of Mary. When he got ready to deliver Israel, what river? Did they have to cross 
to get into Canaan. Oh, it was the Jordan River, the same river where Jesus was baptized in. God does his best work. Somebody shout in the water. It was the man at the pool of Bethesda who was able to pick his bed up after 38 years because God does his best work. Help me, Holy Ghost. In the water, Naaman said, um, Elijah, you almost had me. I know about that Jordan. That's some dirty water. See, Naaman, he must have not listened to Isocrates because he wasn't humble. He wanted water to match his credentials. What he got was water that matched his condition. <laughs> he said, why can't I go to Abana? Why can't I go to Farfar? Those are cleaner rivers. He said, no. You're going to the Jordan. Naaman said, nope, I ain't going. I ain't going. I'll keep my leprosy before I get in that dirty water. How many of you have allowed your dignity to mess up your deliverance? You too arrogant to get dirty. You too arrogant to, I wish I had somebody who didn't care what they look like right now and cried until your eyelashes fell off of your face. I dare you to shout like you look ugly with an ugly cry and tell your neighbor, I came to get dirty for this miracle. I came to get dirty for this blessing. I came to look ugly for this deliverance. Too many cute Christians. said, I ain't going. I'm not going. I got too much swag for that river. Do you know my title? Where's my seat? Do you know who I am? Where's my parking spot? Unclean, unclean. You don't recognize who you are. I remember it was like it was yesterday. I remember one day I had somebody around me, extremely wealthy, and one day Bishop came around. We had this huge meeting, and the person was there, and I was enamored, this was several years ago, by what the person had. Pastor Don, I had no idea what had him. And Bishop, like a father, called me in my, what kind of man call you in your office? <laughs> Said, come in the office. He said, you the man of God, and let me tell you something. They may be looking like they're doing all right. He said, but let me tell you something. They got water. You got the wine. Hold up. Because in John chapter 2, the water ran out, and the water had to be replaced by the one who had the wine. Snap everybody you can reach and tell them, baby, I got the wine. I'm the one that get the party started when everything run out. I'm the one that still got anointing when the oil runs dry. I'm the one that can still pray when all hell is breaking loose. I got the wine. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due season, his servants had to tell him, you tripping, dog. 
take your dirty butt and do what you're supposed to do. Naaman says, all right, I ain't going to like it, but I'm going to go. Tell by the way I walk, I ain't from around here. So, he said, uh, verse 11 says that he lost his temper. Verse 12 says that he had rage. Verse 14 said he was cleaned. Because when he swallowed his pride, and he didn't let his dignity, dignity get in the way of his destiny. God did something in him that had never been done. When you learn to just get out of the... Some of y'all are here right now, 90% of the church is shouting. Some of y'all are at home right now, and everybody in your home is watching the television. But you too cool. But you want the breakthrough. Sometimes you got to get in the Jordan. If it was good enough for Jesus, if it was good enough for Jesus, it was good enough. Let me let y'all go. He said, I want you to dip. Where Mark is at? Marcus would have said, do, do seven times. He dipped in there seven times. And he dips in seven times. And, and like Elijah said, he says, I want you to dip in it seven times. And here's what the Bible says. He came up clean. <laughs> that word clean in the Hebrew is the same word for reset. Which means that God brought his skin back to the same level as it was when he was a baby. So now for the first time in his life, he has skins with no scars. God told me to tell you he's about to reset it to the place where you were hurt. He's about to reset your mind to the place before you got scars. He's about to reset your confidence to the place before you gave up on life. Everybody shout, reset, reset, reset my marriage, reset my money, reset my health, reset my church, reset my ministry. I wish I had time to tell you one more thing. I wish I had time to tell you one more thing. I'm about to help you, my brother. Do you hear me? He dips in the water, comes up on the seventh time. I look fly. I look good. Man. Man, that gold bond worked. Skin looking all good. He says, How could I ever repay? How could I ever repay you? Thank you so much. He said, um, by the way. If you don't mind, can I have some dirt? Enough so that all of my camels can carry the dirt back with me. Now, Naaman, you're confusing me. You just had a problem with the dirty river. Now you're asking the king for some dirt. Because contextually what we must understand is in those days they built their altars out of dirt. So the reason why he was asking for dirt is because he was getting ready to praise the God of the prophet. What if I told you that God took you through what he took you through so somebody else could praise him? I don't know who this word is for, but I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when I move, you move just like that. 
If I shout, you shout. Just like that. If I run, you run. Just like that. Give your neighbor a high five and shout neighbor. God told me to tell you uh, that all things are getting ready to work for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I need about 500 people to step over your neighbor and get in the aisle and shout neighbor, neighbor. God told me to tell you that a weeping may endure for a night, but John, getting ready to come in the morning. Are y'all praying with me here? Look at another neighbor. Turn to the neighbor beside you and tell them, neighbor, everything is going to be all right. Did they say anything? You got the wrong neighbor. Turn to somebody else and say, neighbor, after all I've been through, I still, still got joy. Did they say anything? You got the wrong neighbor. Turn to somebody else and shall name God told me to tell you everything is going to be all right. Do you believe it? Do you receive it? If you believe it, shall he yeah. Shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say yeah. Yeah. I feel a ripple. I feel a ripple. Your praise is about to get to your city where your mama at. I feel a ripple. Your child's about to get off drugs. I feel a ripple. I feel a ripple. I feel a ripple. Somebody's about to get set free. I feel a ripple. I feel a ripple. worship on this dirt. You got to worship on this situation. You got to worship on this problem. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Something about to happen. I feel something about to happen. I'm trying to leave y'all alone. But now I done got to happen myself. When I think about what he's done for me. Ah, when I think about where he brought me from.
This wasn't the outcome they expected out of Naaman. He was supposed to be unclean until he died. This ain't how this story was supposed to end. See, the reason why I know some of y'all are gonna be all right because your life was formed in the dirt. And that's where the potter gets his material from. That's why you're at the potter's house, because God is making you anew. The potter wants to put you back together again. King had a servant named Gehazi. After all of this drama was over, he runs out, catches up with Naaman. Says, Naaman, how you doing? He said, the king sent me out here to tell you that a couple of the people who helped with the service didn't get a love offer. He sent me out here to see if I can collect. He said, sure. It's a couple of hundred pounds of silver and some clothes. Take it back to him. He even puts it in bags, two bags, and ties it up and gives it to them. And him and the two servants, they take the stuff and they start to walk away. Naaman goes about his business. Help your people, Holy Ghost. And when he gets far enough away from Naaman where he can't be seen, he tells the servants, I got it from here, y'all go, y'all go ahead. He lets them go and he steals their gifts. For himself. So this is why you need to learn to operate in your gift. Why are you gonna try to be Bishop Jakes? That's a losing battle. But he takes the money. And when he gets back, Elijah says, um, where you been? He says, I'm just running errands and you know, helping the people. He said, boy, you forgot I'm a prophet? I saw what you did. He says, is this the time to be looking out for yourself? Okay. This is what you must understand. Since you wanted his gift, now you got to have his curse. And the Bible says his skin began to flake. Can I give you a word? God has a curse waiting on anybody who took advantage of you. They may have gotten by, but they will not. <laughs> 